it is trying to help you out. I mean, I don't know why in the world you would want to abandon your own press corps, but then again, though, at the same time, though, um, when you have spent the vast majority of your political career doing flip-flops, I guess at some point in time, they are going to ask you a question that uh, you're probably not going to be able to answer. Tonight, as the presumptive nominee, Vice President Harris is supposed to travel everywhere she goes with a protective press pool. We just learned that she left her press pool behind to attend an event at Howard University yesterday. We have reached out to her office. We are waiting back. Uh, we are awaiting an answer back from them as to why she didn't want a small group of reporters documenting her trip across town. Note this. Donald Trump is more popular today than he was on August 13th in either 2020 or 2016. So the bottom line is, yes, Kamala Harris is doing better in the polls, but there's a long way to go. The polls can shift. The almost certain the vote hasn't actually shifted, and Donald Trump is more popular than he was at either 2016 or 2020 at this point. So now you guys obviously heard some of that there. Of course, that there's just a nice little nugget to kind of prime and start this video. But uh, we need to talk about why it is that this woman's not doing interviews. And by woman, I'm talking about... Uh, Harris, who, for whatever reason, anytime you talk about her here on this channel or you talk about her anywhere, uh, yeah, unless you actually have a large platform, you're not going to get pushed. So uh, make sure you guys please hit the like button so that way these videos do take off. Also, let it run so that way we can get the watch time up as well so that way YouTube will, in fact, do that. Now, kind of like a bit of an idiot for uh, doing that, but there's also going to be another reason why, as I'm mentioning that, because we have this uh, report coming out that... Uh, yeah, Harris is apparently editing um, headlines. I'm going to explain why this is a terrible idea here in a second, because obviously I just asked you guys to hit the like button. And of course, this has also got something to do with it as well. It's got to do with the fact that uh, somebody is paying for ads. And if you're paying for ads, you get inorganic support, meaning the support's actually fake. And I have a bad feeling that uh, that's probably what we're going to be seeing over the next few months. So make sure you guys stick around for the full video. So why in the world does this woman not want to take interviews? There's also this little bit that uh, you guys are seeing here in the B-roll footage where it is that now she's trying to run on being a tough on crime prosecutor, want to cl close the border, referencing the bill that James Lankford had actually uh, offered up, which was a terrible bill. Yeah, it, it seems to me like what these people are simply doing is running on the whole notion of we're going to fix what it is that we screwed up. And of course, we know we can get away with this because our voters are stupid. That right there is what it looks like. However, it's like Judge Joe Brown said, if you can only uh, get to the casting couch, it just goes to show you that uh, you can't get anywhere without any form of talent. I mean, the casting couch only takes you but so far. But once again, though, here we are talking about Kamala Harris, not one to take any actual questions and not one to do any interviews. But first, let's talk about something really quick because you guys obviously saw a small section of a clip there showing that former President Trump's, uh, let's just say his uh, likability is going up. Now, I wonder why that right there might be the case. Could it be the fact that Kamala Harris was so unlikable four weeks ago, in which, of course, they tell us now she's got a favorability of 53%? Is it possible that maybe the numbers could be fake? Is it I mean, I mean so, so, so what in the world is going on here? Well, the thing is this right here. That little bit was taken from a CNN segment that I'm going to play for you guys here in a second. We're going to respond to. And then there's also another CNN segment that we're going to be responding to. And, of course, the one that we're going to be responding to was a bit of a meltdown that was had the other night between two commentators who, quite frankly, forget that a lot of the uh, negativity around Kamala Harris was actually put out by the Biden administration. I sense a brand new narrative on its way, but we'll get to that here in a second. But I do want to go ahead and take care of this uh, overhyping and fakeness. Now, before we get to that, let me go ahead and play the first half for you guys. So that way you guys can see where we're going. This Great Lake Battleground states Trump was underestimated by nine points on average at this point in 2016. How about 2020? It wasn't a one-off. Look at this. He was underestimated by five points on average. And of course, Kamala Harris's advantage in those New York Times Siena College polls were four points in each of these key battleground states, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin. The bottom line is this. If you have any idea, if you're a Kamala Harris fan and you want to rip open the champagne bottle, pop that cork, do not do it. Donald Trump is very much in this race. If we have a polling shift like we've seen in prior years from now until the final result, Donald Trump would actually win. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but I am saying that he is very much in this ball game based upon where he is right now and compare that to where he was in prior years. We certainly heard the Harris campaign saying we have to keep fighting. That Absolutely. This is definitely not over. All right. Uh, let's talk about enthusiasm and how that translates actually. Uh, we are quite a ways out. Again, three months about. 
Yeah, you know, you uh, yesterday I was mentioning, you know, the well, man is basically doing is he's saying the exact same thing that we've been telling you guys for a while. They tend to always underestimate Donald Trump and his support, and it's also very hard to uh, poll his voters. It's one of the reasons why it is that people like Richard Barris, Mark Thompson at Rasmussen Reports, also other pollsters have pointed out uh, that Harris is not really up in this race. As a matter of fact, she's actually doing worse in many other areas than what Hillary Clinton was doing in 2016, and let's just go ahead and be honest. The real reason why it was that she lost that race is because her turnout was not there. The only turnout that Kamala Harris is getting right now is, for the most part, a response bias that is coming mostly from blue areas. The, investor, the Investor's Business Daily Tracking Poll also confirmed this. I'll link it in the description box because they actually poll by area, and they saw that Harris's massive spike came from the West Coast. Also, to go on top of that, she received a massive spike in the Northeast, but when you actually boil down the numbers, you see that that's normal of Pennsylvania. Everywhere else, she's not getting any actual spikes at all. It's one of the main reasons why it is that I think that the media is going to have a lot to answer for the day after the election, but of course, they're not going to answer for it because nobody holds them accountable. Except, of course, the Trump team at this moment in time. Basically, what my man is saying is that uh, we overhyped this woman a little bit too much. Now, I'm going to play the other half for you guys, and then we're going to come back to what I was talking about earlier about uh, Kamala Harris and the ads and, of course, the fake support. But let's roll the other half. Product ticket was up. Yep. But that enthusiasm is not the same thing as going out to actually vote. And there's a different question, which essentially says, how certain are you actually going to go out and vote? And this is the top range, almost certain to vote. Again, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. This is among registered voters. Look at this. Look at Kamala mm -hmm. Harris now compared to where Joe Biden was back in May. In fact, 62 percent of Joe Biden voters said they were almost certain to turn out and vote. Now, it's gone it's, down. It's actually oh. gone down a little bit. I would call this in the same general area at 61 percent. But it's basically unchanged. And look at Donald Trump. He was at 58 percent in May. He's actually gone up a little bit now. He's at 60 percent now. Again, basically no real change. So the bottom line here is, yes, there may be more enthusiasm for Kamala Harris. But the fact is, we're not seeing that necessarily translate in the almost certain vote. And one little other note, Sarah. Yeah. I uh, apparently, the enthusiasm for Kamala Harris went down. Can I tell you why that's the case? A lot of that is because Democrat Party voters or never Trump or anti-Trump voters who live in the Midwest or voters who live in the South or voters who live in areas where Trump was probably going to win or where you have to actually run at, they're not exactly excited to vote for her. Whereas, of course, in places like, say, California and New York, blue areas, blue states, Illinois, they are excited to vote for her. It's the only way you can actually explain this that she even went down a point from Biden's numbers, which means that, yeah, you're probably going to see the polling data change here real soon. Now, this thing about polls, Mark Thompson at Rasmussen Reports, he called out the media wanting to know why it was that uh, they haven't released any brand new polling. And I think the real reason why they're doing is that a lot like the State of the Union for Biden, which, by the way, the numbers were fake there, too. I think what's actually happening is that they're about to withhold those numbers until after the Democratic Party convention. A convention, by the way, of which, by the way, they're going to try to tell you that she had a great convention and all the donors came together. She got this massive boost, so I expect the polls to be up again. But a convention, by the way, that's going to be marred by what you guys are about to see in the next one minute, 37 seconds. Nala, a supposedly left-wing candidate who's just as far right as Trump on policies such as immigration and crime. It looks like Kamala has chosen her partner in crime. She chose Tim Walls as her genocidal running mate. If you didn't know, Walls was a former command sergeant who supported the war in Afghanistan. As home to the largest Palestinian diaspora in the country, we want to give Killer Kamala, her partners in crime, and her future VP a warm welcome to our city. We do not care who is on the belly come this November. We will not be voting for either genocidal party. As the people of Chicago, we condemn in the strongest words possible the genocidal Democratic Party, which has shown no reservations in materially supporting the Israeli genocide in Gaza. It has been over 300 days since the start of the genocide and over 76 years of colonization by the Zionist entity. We are not only calling for a ceasefire, but we are calling for an end to all U.S. aid to Israel, divestment of the 120 million in Israel bonds that Illinois holds, an end to Chicago's cop city, and a dismissal of the proposed investment of 900 million for prison renewal in Illinois. We call on our elected officials to invest in our communities, to value jobs and education over genocide and incarceration. We the people demand Mayor Johnson and Governor Pritzker to cancel the DNC. We will no longer accept empty gestures by politicians who have been bought out by weapons manufacturers and pro-Israel lobbyists. If the Democratic Party loses in November, their genocidal policies will be blame alone. Stand united in our call for justice. We demand change and we will not be silenced.
We talk. Yes, a lot of threats are going on, and even though Kamala Harris has now pledged to a ceasefire in uh, the Middle East, she kind of pissed off Benjamin Netanyahu, the dominant party over there, and of course, he's not exactly okay with that. The truth be told is this right here. Kamala Harris, she is not doing any better when it comes to Muslim voters. Yes, she's going to get some additional black support now, mostly from young black women, but at the end of the day, she's still struggling with that subsection, which, by the way, she's going to need when she goes to try to get votes in the Midwest. Which brings me to the point of fakes and faking and, of course, Google ads and faking the numbers. When you are a YouTuber, and I want to use this as an example of what I mean by this. I'm going to just flip my hat back around. When you are a YouTuber, I'll just quick take it off. When you are a YouTuber, you get the option to pay for... I don't know, like Google ads, you get to pay money to try to promote your channel, to try to get it put on other people's channels. Like, I get it from time to time. Like, The Blaze, for example, will have an episode of Whatchamacallit on one of my videos while it's playing because sometimes I will go back and rewatch my videos from time to time just to see exactly where I was at. But you get an ad for, like, uh, like Jason Whitlock or something like that. A whole hour and a half stream. Happens. What Harris is doing right now is she's buying ads on Google. The problem with that is that while you are getting exposure, you're not gaining any actual support. Many YouTubers have done this uh, this right here to try to up their numbers, to try to get them more overall exposure. I actually have not. The only time I did anything like that was on Facebook where I wanted to post to get boosted, but then I realized it wasn't really giving me the exposure that I thought it was going to do, and I thought to myself, well, maybe the exposure, maybe the support that I'm getting may not be real. Didn't really get any support off that. I prefer just to keep posting like a person who's not going to get paid or anything for the time being because I know that the support that I get is, in fact, organic and it is, in fact, real. The support that Harris is getting is not exactly real, and the support that is real is coming from areas that are not going to benefit her come election time because, guess what? You win these elections through the Electoral College, not the popular vote. And something else, too, it's not just buying ads themselves to push them out there. It's also changing the headlines itself. You see, this type of strategy is not going to work because, like I said before, you know, it's not organic support. It's fake support. The manipulating of ads, that right there is a news story that even the liberal media is covering at this moment in time and saying, look, this right here was not something we're not good with. This will probably leave this full live stream in the description box for you guys to see because, believe it or not, the Benny guy actually covered it accurately. But something else, too, that you guys have got to understand about this is that the liberal media is upset about this. Even Axios themselves did a bit on this, as well as The Guardian, which does swing left is that when you do this, you're also costing the liberal media itself actual money. It's, you're costing them money, too. That is a different explanation, but it's part of the reason why I'm going to leave that live stream in the description box for you. So even the liberal media is upset about her campaign changing the headline. And when you got Newsweek, which swings left reporting on this, yeah, obviously you got a problem. But while, yeah, you're getting more overall exposure, you're not getting any actual real support to go along with it. And, of course, there is also the social issue, which may come up in the video later on this week. I may actually put it out on Friday. I'm not sure yet. I want to let a few more things actually kind of collect itself before I decide to go on that. But given this woman's history of flip-flops and now the fact that she wants to now claim tax on tips, let me just go ahead and kind of remind you guys of exactly how this entire situation really and truly came about. Eliminate taxes on tips for service and hospitality workers. A few moments later. Biden seems intent on taking your earnings hostage. Now, the IRS, they just announced this week that they want to start tracking all of the tips that workers earn so that they can be taxed for it. Uh, so, so much for Biden's sacred promise not to raise taxes on anyone making less than $400,000 a year. Remember, this is all part of Biden's so-called Inflation Reduction Act. The yeas are 50, the nays are 50. The Senate being equally divided, the vice president votes in the affirmative, and the bill, as amended, is passed. That's the reason why it was I threw that bit in there, especially with her being the deciding vote. And I may do a video a little bit later on this week about the social issue, because obviously you're going to get all kinds of phrases thrown out there saying that if you don't vote for Harris, you ain't black, even though she's not black. There's been this issue between Ricky Smiley and he, of course, he's been out there hitting people saying that if you don't vote for her, you're not black, you're not a good Democrat. And of course, one person who's done some content on him, of course, was Kwame Brown. Greg Foreman has also done content on several people have done content on Ricky Smiley and what he's been saying here recently. But the reason why I threw the no tax on tips bit is because that's the thing that people have been kind of been hitting back at Ricky Smiley about was the fact that this right here is not her own policy and she's actually been targeting those who are waiters and waitresses who work in the service industry. 
That right there is what she's been doing as she decided to cast the tie-breaking vote. The truth be told is nothing about this woman, and you'll hear me say it over and over and over again, is organic at all. It's all fake. I also remember when this woman shot to the top, she rose like a damn phoenix, and all of a sudden she fell flatter in a reverse phoenix. That was Tulsi Gabbard who completely just knifed this woman apart. I don't think I need to play the clip again, but don't worry, I'll leave it in the description box for you guys if you want to see it and bask in the ambience. But there's something else, too, that needs to be said. This woman is not doing her policy speech, her actual economic policy speech, until Friday. Why is that the case? Well, you see, Friday is the news day that gets the least amount of news or least amount of attention, which means that she's going to unveil her economic policy on that day when nobody's going to be watching, meaning that she expects the mainstream media to, in fact, carry her to the presidency. I have a feeling that uh, one of the narratives that's going to be asserted is uh, you didn't do your job to help her get elected, but we'll talk about that at the end of the video. That's correct. She was the deciding vote when it came to taxing tips and going after those workers. But there was one more part that I wanted to talk about, and that's actually the stuff that was actually put out by the Biden team right after they got in the Oval Office. She's, you see, Kamala Harris was already hampered by the Biden administration going into this election cycle anyways. But if you guys remember correctly, there were all kinds of rumors coming out that Biden was not happy with Harris. Jill Biden wanted uh, him to take Pete Buttigieg instead. They didn't really like her and that uh, they gave her the border czar position because they just wanted her to get the hell out of the way. And of course, that was an easy job for, uh, easy job for her to have. And obviously, she screwed it up. Of course, people told her to screw it up. But still, though, it still happened on her watch. But of course, you've got pundits on CNN arguing about this and people getting upset and getting triggered over the facts. Let me just go ahead and roll For it. their policies or their positions. But he's just sort of griping just because she exists, to your point. And I think we know why he's griping because she exists. She's a black woman. And everything that I've seen in the course of his career, and I know that he has black women in his circle, and I know he's appointed Amarosa and all of that. I know all of that background. But also know when he's confronted and being held accountable by black women, time and time again, he has shown to be someone who is uncomfortable in that situation. And I think he's complaining more because it's Kamala Harris, a black woman, than any other factor. There's nothing that he's saying. There goes that narrative. There goes that narrative. But let's watch the rest of it. It wasn't actually said by Biden campaign personnel in leaks to the press for months and months before the hot swap unfolded. For literally about three plus years, you had folks around President Biden who were leaking against, undermining, characterizing Kamala Harris as a disaster, this? as underprepared, how do you be know this? because of extensive reporting, and drawing how on White House yeah, how sources. Come former President Trump doesn't know this. If you've known for three years this woman was coming, and now she's here, and you're confused about sorry, what I'm to so, do. I'm sorry, I wasn't, I wasn't sufficiently clear. What I'm saying is that what he is saying now, when he is uh, diminishing her capacity and what have you, these were all things that were standard talking points coming from Democrats okay. who were anxious Listen. about her weaknesses. So wait, now, wait, wait, only wait. over the last month or so Listen. has the narrative entirely changed about this because the press no longer felt the block. It gets better. It does, in fact, get better, as you guys will see here in a second. But I want to say this right quick. There's a certain little narrative that I think is going to be planted after this election. And I'm going to go ahead and talk about the narratives here soon, because I think the real reason why it is this woman does not want to answer any questions from the media is because she knows that somewhere somebody's probably going to be honest and ask an honest question. We should also tell you exactly how weak this woman is as a candidate. But let's watch this last part. Tech. So are, President you, Biden. are you suggesting so this then changed. this is originating because Donald Trump is following the intel of Democrats and this is based solely upon the intel of Democrats and not some long-standing representation of how he feels about American people since the 1970s? No, okay, I think nope. what he's suggesting <laughs> is that this is not just off of what Democrats have said, but Democrats have also said some of the same things Trump has said. And so him saying these things is not something new that no one's ever said before that she's incompetent. And you can point to the policies. You can look at so many policies I, yes, throughout this administration can, that she has doesn't. to own yes, she that can, will hurt during the swing states. It's idea. true. The Biden administration, Democrats, other Democrats were saying this about Harris right after she got the nod as the VP. They've been hitting her for a very long time, including all liberal media outlets. Like I said, the truth be told is this here. This woman four weeks ago had a likability rating of only about 28%. Now, all of a sudden, she's at 53%. Like I said before, nothing about this candidacy, nothing about this presidential run is real at all. 
all of her numbers are fake. That right there is the real truth about Kamala Harris. Look, they held back the polls after the State of the Union address that Biden gave to try to give him a bit of a bump. They're doing that now with her. Hence the reason why it is that, once again, Mark Thompson at Rasmussen Reports is actually correct. They're holding on the information purposely. By the way, speaking of Rasmussen Reports, before people start saying it's a right-wing polling company, uh, they haven't been a right-wing polling company or a conservative polling company since 2012 when Scott Rasmussen himself was there. He no longer works there. Mark Thompson and those guys have taken over since, and they've become more accurate since. I mean, they called 2016 correctly. They called 2020 correctly, and I personally believe they're calling 2024 correctly. But that right there brings us to the narratives. The narrative that's going to be pushed if Kamala Harris loses this election, which I think she will, will be Democrats did not do their part to get her elected. Democrats screwed her. They kneecapped her. They kneecapped the black woman, even though she's half Indian, half Jamaican. That right there will be one of the many narratives. You will hear Russia. You will hear every narrative in the world. The far left, they did this. You will hear every narrative possible. So go ahead and get ready for it because it is coming. But you guys, please tell me what you think in the comment section. I would love to hear what you guys have got to say. Please hit the like button, however. Please subscribe. Please share the video. Please sound off in the comments. And I'll see you guys later. <laughs>